Ocho que no hay nada tan igual no como girlfriend. I told my girlfriend we can't live together. Da mo guía na ugo bisoka ko tuaba. She said what? Gute, ti bisoka. I said we have to be married for us to be to live together. Tu gomba bisoka na hajma tu kono kuba. You know what she said? Arabia. She said that's so cute. You can't even say this. I can't even say it. I said you don't understand. Gona kwa tabi sana kuba. It's not about cuteness. Na ugo arabi ni kusabi ya zabi na ho. I'm a different man. She was confused. She comes from a different background. We party together. We party together. We traveled all around the world. Smoking hookah. Drinking. I used to I used to give her alcohol because I thought it was fun if I if you could only get a little tipsy. I thought it was cute. But then out of a sudden I became a pastor. For one year I was in my room. I was praying. Days. Months. And I thought somehow God would walk in the room one day. And I said, hey, my child. I'm right here. That's not what happened. As I was praying, my spirit was literally being energized. I was changing before I knew. I started really understanding things I never understood. I'll talk to myself and answer myself. And I came to realize the Holy Spirit was real. I had so many encounters in my room. And she sees that like every girl is looking for you. It can make you very insecure. So we started having weird relationships, like in a way. That was, she was supposed to be doing something. Then I'm happy. If she doesn't do it, I'm not happy. We had so much, so many fights, unnecessary fights. I don't know And I of everything. I was getting lost. I was lost. Somehow. So, so I was having an issue with my girlfriend at the time. I was confused. I didn't know where I was going with life. I didn't know where I was going with life. So, things started getting really, really bad. Some of the things she didn't even know. Because of being famous, I, I learned a way to to keep everything for, you know, on, on me and for myself. Nobody knew anything about me. It would be amazing if she was the one, you know? Um, I'm just gonna share my story a little bit. Since you don't have to come to Rwanda, I'm trying to do that. I'm to Rwanda. Which one gets them? Okay. If I'm going to say this, because I'll try to mix. I'll try to mix. Because a lot of people listen to us just speak in Rwanda. And um, you know, when I started music, I was in Rwanda. And my vision was to just do Kenya Rwanda and music in Kenya Rwanda. So when I came to the US, I didn't know how big the world was. So I said maybe I should change my vision to reach out to the whole world. But I was doing. Um, that's with the wrong intention. You know, living a life without God is to fool yourself. 
Um, I grew up in church like most of you know. I sang in a choir. I sang in a choir. And they say my voice was beautiful so I could do more with that. I went outside of the church. And I started singing and I met money and I got famous. And you know, sometimes when you're looking for something, you finally find it. At that time, you might understand that that's not what you needed. And I'm going to show you how to do it. We are looking after. We are running after money. We are looking after money. We are running after money. We are looking 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 after money. Every time you reach the goal, you only want more. And at some point in my life, I was wondering, what am I looking for in life? Because everything I wanted, I was, I was seeing it. Um, and it was easy. I was making money easily. People say love me. I, you know, when you're going to be a, a big crowd, and people are singing your name, you might feel something about it. But there's also a personal life that nobody knows. Some people manage to, to suffocate that life and fake everything. They manage to to pretend, but it really takes the grace of God to come out of that. I was in my room in Texas. I had um, uh, I had different conferences all over the world. I even went back home. Everything was good. But suddenly something hit me out of nowhere. I just realized that everything I was looking for, I got it. But my heart was just racing all the time. People say I was uh, romantic and because of love songs. But the craziest thing about love songs the ones that are singing the songs are not automatically oh they're not romantic I had a girlfriend at the time I had a girlfriend at the time and she's my wife now um, our relationship was weird because people assume somehow I was romantic. But the truth is, I was selfish. You see, in a relationship, you might say you're in love, but it can only take a little bit of frustration. You realize you're not in love. So that kind of love is fake. I don't care how much you think you love. It's just, it takes one person to make you mad. You know? So that kind of love is centered in selfishness. So when I met my wife, I tricked her into me being a good, a cool guy and Romantic and all that. She didn't even know I was famous in my country. No. I got up there. She didn't know she that. Didn't know that. So when she got to know it, she realized it was a problem. You know, if you go to a concert, you have a wife, and she sees that every girl is looking for you. 
it can make you very insecure. So we started having weird relationships, like in a way that it was she was supposed to be doing something, then I'm happy. If she doesn't do it, I'm not happy. We had so much, so many fights, unnecessary fights. In the middle of everything, I was getting lost. I was lost. I somehow. So, so I was having an issue with my girlfriend at the time. I was confused. I didn't know where I was going with life. I didn't know where I was going with life. So things started getting really, really bad. Some of the things she didn't even know. Because of being famous, I, I learned a way to, to keep everything for, you know, on, on me and for myself. Nobody knew anything about me. A lot of famous people, that's what they struggle with. And another people have said, you to I heard this while I was still young. Could you have you out? That this happens among the young, you know, famous people. But I can't ignore it. I call So that thing happened to me too. I was in Belgium one day in Brussels. I had a concert. The whole thing was packed. We had a great concert. I went back in my room. I never felt so empty in my life. What I'm talking about, you might not relate. But I pray to God that you are convinced. You know, people who go to hell, it's not because they didn't, they didn't hear these things. It's because they didn't believe it. Have you ever had a, a close, maybe like your mom or your father or your sister who passed away? Sometimes it's not something you thought about that they would go, you know? But when they go, you're almost shocked. So the question is like, did you think they were going to live forever? The difference is because you just don't believe it. You don't Your heart is not convicted about those things. Unless the, the reality of God is deep in your heart, you keep forcing these things. But you don't have to hit rock bottom for you to change your mind. Some people receive it, some people don't. And it's okay. There's no way in the Bible. Um, the Bible, there's no way the Bible says we will all go to heaven. There's no way that says that. Do you know that way? Like we will all go to heaven. And it's not to say that we should do this so we can go to heaven. You know, we are saved so, can, so heaven can come into us. Some of us, heaven has started already. When we take off from this place, it will be just like a continuation. So, some people, they say they're Christians. But they don't believe it. Are you surprised? Because every time when somebody dies, they say he went to heaven. That statement always bothered me. You can't live with an assumption, you know? You can't just assume your whole life. And for me, I don't. I'm the, I'm the kind of person that don't, I don't settle with assumptions. Either I know it or I don't. And 
ndabizi cyangwa se tabizi but i don't want to live in uncertainty ariko sishaka kubaho kutamenya a lot of religions amadini menshi they promise heaven babagira abantu yuko hari ijuru bazabonishije they even tell them you have to do this and do this to be to go to heaven babagira ukore ibi nibi kugira ngo muragwe ijuru but there's only one person ariko hari umuntu umwe gusa that promised what we say is that you can know you can go to heaven today ko wo kugizeye uno munsi wanya mu ijuru you don't have to wait to die ntabwo bitsaba gutegereza gupfa i think that's better you know ndatekereza ko ari byiza i'd rather believe somebody that says that they know na kwizera cyane umuntu uzi yuko than believe somebody who says i may or may not kuruta umuntu uvuga ko birashoboka cyangwa ari byashoboka there's only one person in this whole universe hari umuntu we gusa kuri uyu mubombe that claimed wige zavuga ko i'm the way the truth and the life nzira dukuri dubugingo there's only one person no one no one saw you say na no one saw us na no one there's no man that even say that i do i do a lot of readings by the way on that so much chat over here since long ago yes i wanted to know the truth about life na shatte kumenya ukuri kubuzima because i didn't want to be wrong you know kuko ruva na shaka ku kuyoba what's the point of having everything and have everybody approach you but yet you are losing yamari ki kugira abantu bose bakomera amashya ariko ukaba nacho ufite and to one of you realize that at the end you know kandi ibi nayo ubona yuko kukwiyerezo i grew up uh, loving michael jackson nakuze munda michael jackson when he died i was young ye yapfuye nari mpe moto i mean you have to be stupid to ignore everything that happened ugomba kuru muswa kugira ngo wegagize ibintu byose the guy was having a blast a song for it you can say he had a good time let's say yeah gives me yeah i gave you this a chance yeah gives me this had amazing concert ama concert atandukanye people people were fainting hanyuma abantu bakita babakagwa i have seen people fainting in my concert can you believe nanyo yambe yara habe ama concert i did abantu bakagwa hasi i'm serious okay and i was confused hanyuma ugandi bikancha i said i'm sure this is not the holy spirit <laughs> must be something else <laughs> everything was completely confusion in my heart i saw people crying crying with tears i said what do they see that i don't see but you see this is what happens our minds are programmed and it starts when we are young can be tangi at kibato we create passions in our hearts and that's why you have to shut up get we think a certain way to take as a bidanya no buryo and some of those things start controlling us halba bigatangi bikadutegeka and something manifests in your body halba bigatangi akwigaragaza mu mibiri yacu you say this is real halba tukaywana ngibihari it's not real halba bihari you know america is almost falling apart right now America ubwo binagana hari nimuka there's so much confusion going on hari uko dasobanukirwa hija no hino so don't even know who they are anymore abantu ni bakimenya bari bo but you know why muzi bavu they lost the standard of truth basi ze standard zukuri when you lose truth utakaje kuri you start making your own truth utangira kwemera kuri so some people are so convinced about something hari abantu bazi ko bazi ibintu runaka and it has nothing to do with the truth kandi bitajya nyi no kuri runaka they are truth no kuri kwa bwimbi But let me tell you something. Ariko ni kumbabwiye. Truth is an absolute. Ukuri ntabwo uhinduka. Ni kuri ntabwo is a straight line. Ukuri ntabwo uhinduka. A truth is a person. Kandi ukuri ni umuntu. Truth came here on earth at some point. Ukuri kwaje hano kwisi. And he proclaimed that it was truth. Hanyuma kuvuga yuko ari ukuri koko. He said he was the way. Kandi kukwemeza yuko ari konzira and the life. No ugingo. So how can you ignore all those things? Niko tusho kwiregagiza ibyo byose. And even assumptions. Hadi mukabaho kukwibwira ibintu. Let me talk to you about purpose. Niko mbabwire hejuri ntego cyangwa impamvu. When I was young I wanted to know where I was supposed to do as a, at, at every step of my life. Niri muto nifuza ga shaka kumenya cyane cyo ngomba gukora kuri kuri buri rwego rwanje. I used to think a lot. I think is a challenge. And my mother would come to me what are you thinking about and i realized she wouldn't even understand what i'm thinking about and i never said anything i started having visions when i was young on my bed i see something i wake up in the morning 
gitondo byutse Jesus will come in my dreams. Yes, I can see the I thought maybe I was brainwashed. Because my life was going in a way that was completely opposite of where. So I wondered, what am I supposed to be doing? Because I said, if there's such a thing as a purpose, and I lose it, then my life is meaningless. Let me tell you something. You were born. What have you said? Your parents didn't know it was you coming. They only wanted a the child. They didn't know it was Patrick. They didn't know how you were going to look like. So they had no idea. They, they had no idea who you were going to be. But it's one person who knows who you are. That same person eventually will have to face him at the end. This is the only chance you get to make up your mind. When I go places to uh, talk about my testimony, I don't, I don't always say they will believe what I'm saying. It's not my business really to make you believe what I'm saying. I was only told to tell you. I have gained so much followers all around the world. But I realized there was nothing I had to give to them. Even if I gave them a song, that song will fade away at some point. But I had to give them something they would stay with. Something that would keep them. That will keep them alive. Before I make up my mind, I counted my cost. I said, if I have to be poor, if I have to, be on, if I have to go on the streets, if I have to start over, I was okay with it. Only because of one reason. Because I understood who had called me. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you why most people don't believe. A, the Bible is the standard, is the truth of God. You cannot make up your own truth. And if you don't receive that word and take it serious, you will live in assumptions. So I took my Bible. I started reading the Bible. In my room, I said, God, you have to talk to me. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want. I don't even know who I am. And I believe you know. For one year, I was in my room. I was praying. Days. Months. And I thought somehow God would walk in the room one day and say, hey, my child, I'm right here. That's not what happened. As I was praying, my spirit was literally being energized. I was changing before I knew. I started really understanding things I never understood. I'll talk to myself and answer myself. And I came to realize the Holy Spirit was real. I had so many encounters in my room. At some point I knew God was real. You know, if I ever told you, I saw Jesus, you won't believe it. So me telling you that I saw Jesus is not going to happen. Because even the disciples were with Jesus. They still, they still denied him. And they were with him. 
It's only the Holy Spirit that convinces. It's not my words. It's not my experience. My experience is only good for me. I know and I'm sure. But do you know it? Are you sure? So my life completely changed in my room. I started clearing my phone. I had moved in with my girlfriend at the time. I told my girlfriend we can't live together anymore. She said, what? I said, we have to be married for us to, be, to live together. You know what she said? She said, that's so cute. I said, you don't understand. It's not about cuteness. I'm a different man. She was confused. She comes from a different background. We party together. We party together. We traveled all around the world. Smoking hookah. Drinking. I used to I used to give her alcohol because I thought it was fun if I if you could only get a little tipsy. I thought it was cute. But then out of a sudden I became a pastor. She said, I don't know who you are anymore. You know what I did? I started praying for her. I prayed for her. Every day, every night, I said, Jesus, if you revealed yourself to me, reveal yourself to her. Every night, every day, every night, she would sleep. She said, Baby, I had a dream. She said, What kind of dream is it? She said, I saw a man. She said, Something that I don't understand. I said, What did, she, what did he say? He said, I told him I was thirsty. He said, uh, I'll give you the water. I said, no, that's Jesus. He says, what? Good How is it Jesus? Yes, I said, don't worry. Let's just go. I went back in my room. I started praying again. I said, Jesus, yes, give her another dream. Give her another dream. She will believe. She kept having dreams. I'm talking about Bible dreams. Let me tell you something. It's hard to talk about the gospel if you haven't experienced it. I never know how to speak like this in front of you. I'm telling you. I was even shy. As soon as I received the Holy Spirit, I came out of my body. I came out. I was preaching the gospel in Walmart. Every person that would knock on my door, I would have them saved. I became sold out. I was talking about Jesus. Only about Jesus. Let me tell you something. I don't care about anything. It doesn't matter what people say. I've passed that level. The reason why I came here, I want you to have the same mindset. The same fire in you. If God can do it in my heart, He can do it for you. You're not too far gone. I started praying for my wife. So I would go outside to pray at night. One day she asked me, How do you pray? I said, Why don't you come and pray with me? She said, How do you pray? I said, Just come. You have nothing to do. We know this. So we went in a park. To get the hand on the park at night. I started praying. I started speaking in tongues. Can you imagine? Many speaks in tongues. Boy. She thought I was praying in Kinyarwanda. <laughs> she started crying. She said, Baby, I don't know why I'm crying. I knew the Holy Spirit was doing something. She couldn't stop crying. I was so excited in my heart. I said, God, more. More. She kept crying. She said, I don't know how I'm feeling. 
What is this? You know, it was a challenge because she had, not, she had no idea. She, she knows nothing about Jesus. Zero. 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 I told her, let's go back. Second time we went there, she had another dream. When she woke up, she said, baby, I think I want to follow Jesus. I said, what? You know what I did? I led her to Christ. I said, if you beat up to me, as I say, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my heart. From today, boy, that was the beginning of my life. If you come to my house, we're full of happiness, full of peace. Every relationship that's not centered in God is centered on selfishness. I'm talking to you because um, I know these things. They happen to me. There's an image that people have about me. But there's another image that God has. This is the one God has. What you saw before was not me. When I seek to be happy, I was desperate. When I seek to be happy, I was desperate. I just wanted to, get, to be more famous, make more money. But every time I get to the goal, I lost the desire of those things. So don't let the devil fool you even once. He will tell you once you get a family, once you're settled, then you can do this. It's not going to work like that. Maybe you're thinking, once I turn 45 years old, then I'll turn to God. Nothing promises that you'll be 45 anymore. You know, as soon as we pass out of this body, we are more alive than we are today. It's a fact. I've experienced so many things I can't even share here. But I came to realize that God was real in my life. And I asked God, what do you want me to do? People thought I became a gospel singer. I could care less about the music. Let me tell you something. Just because you can do something. Just because you're good at something. It doesn't mean you are called to do that. We are only here for one purpose. Because we choose to be here, you know that. Did any one of you choose to be born? I don't think so. So somebody chose you to be here. So every time you take him out of the picture, you are left with nothing. It doesn't matter what you chase. It does not matter. So today you might be here asking yourself so many questions. Some, some people are younger than me or a little older than me. I don't know what you're looking at when you're looking at me. But let me tell you something. I'm not the same person. I'm not the same person. The things that move me has nothing to do with my career. It has nothing to do with my music. I sing and I'll keep singing. But now I sing with a purpose. I sing with a goal. So I want you it might be in a different industry. Maybe you are in a finance. Maybe you are in a, in a, you are an accountant. Maybe you are an engineer. Make that. Make that a tool. To reach out to people. For the gospel. And if you are not convinced about the gospel. Today. It's your day to make up your mind. Let me tell you something. It means 
You know, you know the gospel, you've heard the gospel. But if it doesn't control your life, you don't believe it. That's what the Bible says. If you're not all out for the gospel, if you're not all out for the gospel, it's because you probably don't believe. Everything that Jesus said, you probably don't believe. But you think you believe. But you don't believe. But today you can make up your mind. It can be bold for the gospel. It can wake up in your spirit. It doesn't matter what, what, who thinks what. It doesn't matter what they say. Let me tell you something. One day, you could be at the, at the beginning, you could be in the middle, or at the end. You will find yourself alone. I'm telling you, one day, one day you will find yourself alone. So when you get there, you will find yourself alone. Some of us, they are going through the season. Some of you might be going through that season right now as we're talking. Some others, maybe they're going towards that direction. Some have gone through it. But one day, you'll be alone. Then at that time, you will realize that only God mattered. Only God mattered. Let me tell you something again. I don't know what you believe about the gospel. I don't know what you believe about Jesus. You might want to go back again. And check. Because it don't mean a thing if you're just going to church to be part of a group. You could be a deacon, you can be a, a choir member. You could even be giving so much money in the church. But you have to know whether you believe or not. Don't leave on assumption. Don't leave on assumption. So we're going to take the line a little bit. We're going, we're going to give the light a little bit. And if you are here, if you are here tonight, and you feel like something in your heart is changing, or you feel like something in your life is not right, or you want to change your life, what God did in my life, He can do in your life. I will personally talk to you after this. I'm not doing this so people can just enjoy the music. I want to do this to win souls for Christ. The only thing that matters to God, the only thing that matters is the souls of men. Don't let anybody fool you. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how, how beautiful your family is. The only thing that matters is the life of God in you. And if you're not born again, this is your chance. You know what Jesus said? No one will see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. To be born again, you just have to receive Christ in your heart. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. Your spirit is born again. Every person is born from Adam. Everybody that's not born again, they have the old self. But with that old self, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Let alone go in the kingdom of God. You can't even see it. You can't even understand it. What I'm talking about right now, some people think I'm crazy. But I'm not crazy. Believe me, I'm not crazy. I saw something they didn't see. I felt something they never felt. I know something they don't know. Believe me. Jesus was in, uh, in, in Israel at some point, physically. He did miracles. He cleansed the leper. The dead were raised from the dead. 
not everybody believed. So it doesn't mean that everybody here has to believe what I'm saying. One person, one person is enough. One person will make my life be satisfied. That's all I'm coming here for. So as we are singing these songs, and you feel it by the Spirit, you want to recommit your life to Christ. Or you want to receive Christ at me. You can come forth at some point. Don't think about anybody. If this is talking to your heart, don't worry about who's here tonight. They are only here tonight. You probably won't even see them tomorrow. So you can make the decision that I made years ago. And you can experience what I experience. Amen. Amen.